about this morning. I invite Pastor Aaron to come up. Well, we are concluding our series this morning, uh, Jesus According to John, as we turn to a passage which may be familiar to some of you. It's John chapter 10, so if you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn there. Um, Wendy will also have the words up on the screen, and this is John chapter 10, starting at verse 7. Now, the context of this is that um, Jesus in chapter 9 has done a miracle um, uh, a man born blind was, uh, had his sight restored and it left the Pharisees baffled and Jesus wants to explain um, what's going on and what his relationship is to, to his people. So this is John chapter 10 starting in verse 7. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. This is the ESV translation, by the way. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord, I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray one more time. Father God, we thank you for your word to us. Thank you for speaking to us in a way that um, you invite us to hear. Thank you for speaking to us through your creation, through your community through um, us being gathered here this morning. We thank you for speaking to us through uh, your word, um, through the Apostle John, um, who you inspired and who you gave this word. And we thank you for your um, speaking to us through your Holy Spirit, through the advocate, through the parakletos, the one who stands beside and who is within um, to witness to the truth of who you are and what you're calling us to. And so I just pray that you would open up our hearts, our minds, and our imagination to receive from you what you want to give us and to, um, that we would be open to the transforming work you wish to do in us uh, as individuals and as a church as well. We thank you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Disorientation. Disorientation. It's a big word. It's a word that theologians like to, to um, mention. Uh, Walter Brueggemann is one who has really uh, made that word um, part of our everyday language as, as uh, those of us in the church. Disorientation refers to this idea that, um, that we just don't know which way is up that we feel like we might be on shifting ground, that the ground we're standing on is not solid, and that life has thrown us so many curveballs and into so many um, loops and spins that when we come around and we try and find our bearings, we don't know 
where we are and which way is up or down. And if I'm being honest with you, I, I know this word disorientation has been mentioned a lot here at Avenue Church. We've talked about it a lot at our leadership team meetings. Um, I've been thinking about this word in my own life a lot. And I, I think it comes from the fact that we are two plus years into a pandemic. Um, we still feel like on a Sunday morning, do we know who's going to be with us? Who's around? What's, what's happening? Uh, you add into this now uh, a war that has dragged on uh, over uh, in what seems like a faraway place and yet affects us here in our everyday lives. We have something that economists now are calling stagflation. Uh, I'm not going to talk about that much, but you see it on your grocery shelves. Um, and for us with a young family, it's like, wow, that costs a lot more than it used to for the same amount of food. So we're dealing with that. And then for those of you who uh, follow along with the comings and goings of the Christian Reformed Church, you'll know that this week was synod. And you'll know that some decisions were made this week that um, were controversial and that will have long-lasting implications for our denomination and for us as Avenue Church. And we haven't even begun to be able to talk about that and process that together. And so it has left us feeling, left me feeling, disorientated. I don't know which way is up or down sometimes and, and what, what the, the ground I'm standing on, if it's solid. But as I've been wrestling through this, and I know as, if, as we've been wrestling through this as a church, um, God has been so gracious in meeting us where we're at. And one image that he keeps bringing me back to, one passage, is this passage in John chapter 10. And I feel like God wants to give us some good things to hang on to this morning, some, uh, a place to reorient ourselves. If we're feeling disorientated, he wants to give us reorientation and a place to, to find our home and our solid footing again. And that solid footing we find in the image of Jesus as being our good shepherd. Jesus is our good shepherd. But if we're going to think and contemplate what it means that Jesus is our good shepherd, we also have to take a moment and think about what it means then that we are sheep. And so um, in some of the research I was doing, I, I think we all have this um, assumption that sheep are not smart animals. Anyone here actually ever have worked with sheep? Oh, Jeannie. Okay, so she can, she can be our sheep expert this morning. <laughs> But from what I've read, and Jeannie, you can help us with it, sheep are actually not all that dumb as animals. They, well, she's like, maybe. There's some. <laughs> from what I've read, they've got some smarts to them. It's not, not fully the stereotype that we have. What I have read uh, is that sheep have three real basic needs. And I see that as we as humans having the same needs. The first need is met in the fact that sheep have a lot of fear. Sheep have fear. And I think we could say as human beings, we are often motivated out of our fear. The second need is that sheep need to belong to a flock. They have to have a flock to belong to. And we as human beings, um, I was in a parenting course we took, they one of the things they said as I hear my kid pouring Lego out all in the back there is that kids need to have a sense of belonging. They need some significance and they need belonging. They need to know that they belong to something bigger than themselves and that they have a place within that community. So sheep have fear. Sheep need a flock. And finally, sheep need someone to follow. And uh, Again, the person they follow is the shepherd who will take them to those safe places, who will care for them, who will fight away any predators, um, and who, who the sheep 
we'll trust. And I think that's the same thing with us as human beings. Whether we like to admit it or not, we are followers. Um, it could be uh, in a community where we at, we have community leaders that we follow. Uh, we have TikTok influencers that we follow. We have all kinds of voices who are, are trying to get us to follow them. And so... Um, it's that third point I want to, to spend some time focusing on this morning. Who are we following? But I do want to address the first two as well. That we as sheep, as God's sheep, we have fear. We do have fear, don't we? I know I do. And uh, I really appreciate what Jesus says here in John 10.10. Uh, 10, where he reminds us why he came and why we need not be afraid. And in John 10.10, 10, he says that um, the sheep, the thief, the enemy, God's enemy, comes only to what? To steal and to kill and to destroy. And we see that happening every day, don't we? Every day. The enemy is trying to divide us from one another, trying to steal uh, the abundance that we have, um, trying to take God's life, that, the, the life that God has given us. But why did Jesus come? I came that they may have life and have it what? Abundantly, to the full. Not just in half measures, not just limping through this life, not just saying, I, I hope I can scrape by. I, Jesus says, I have come so that you might have life and have it to the full, that you might have life and have it abundantly. Now, please hear me when I say that. And this is um, when Jesus says, "I've come that you might have life abundant, uh, it, it, abundantly." He's not saying, "I've come so that you might have an easy life." I haven't come so that you may have life with no work, no hitches, and that your bank accounts might be overflowing. That's not what abundance means. Abundance means uh, discovering life to the fullness and to the, 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 the flourishing that God um, intended for us from the beginning. And that life is not always easy and that life is, is, um, can have challenges, but in those challenges we find the fullness of God. And I'll speak to that a little bit later too. But that's how Jesus addresses our fear by reminding us of why he came. Secondly, we as human beings need a flock. We need to flock, to be in, in community, to have a place. And Jesus, again, just beautifully reminds us in John uh, ten fourteen, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. There's this sense of belonging that Jesus is reminding us of, that we belong to him, that we belong to our creator, that we weren't just some cosmic accident out here trying to find our place and our meaning, but that God somehow, the creator of the universe, somehow knows our names and calls us his own. And he calls us to be part of something greater than ourselves, to be part of this thing he calls a flock, where he promises to be our shepherd. And then finally, Jesus calls us to follow him as our good shepherd. And he says in verse 4, The sheep follow him, that's follow Jesus the shepherd. For what? For they know his voice. In verse 16, he says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. And this is the part of my journey that, that I've been on, I would say, really since sabbatical, maybe even before sabbatical, where I feel like God's been awakening within me this desire to hear his voice as his sheep. And knowing and learning that God actually does care about the details of my life and that he wants to speak into those details. And as I'm sharing this, I, I want you to pay attention within yourself, within your emotions, but within your body too. How does that make you feel when I, when I start to share about this journey that God wants to speak to us and that God is still speaking to us and that we can listen to him? How does that make you 
feel. Okay, I'm getting some thumbs up. <laughs> but I also know maybe, well, Aaron, then you're starting to sound a little Pentecostal here. Yeah, <laughs> I got it. Some hands. Now. Uh, yeah, it's making me a little bit nervous because how do we know it's God speaking to us? How can I know that that thought I had that I think may be God? How do I know that's Him? How do I know it's not the enemy trying to trick me? How do I know that um, it's not just my own thoughts? And I want us to think about a couple things. And, and this, what I'm talking about now, I feel like is going to be a journey. And it's a journey I'm on, and, and I'm going to be more than happy to share it with you. And I, I think it's going to be a journey that we find ourselves on together as a church. Um, but I just want to say a couple of things. Um, the first is this. Jesus calls himself not just a shepherd, but what? The good shepherd. And either we believe that or we don't. That's a choice that he gives us. But how do we know that he is good? How do we know that he is trustworthy? Look at verse 11. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And what does the good shepherd do? The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is not a shepherd who is going to take off at the first sign of danger. This is not a shepherd who is unacquainted with grief. This is not a shepherd who hasn't come into the darkest valleys with us. Because he himself faced death. Because he took our sin upon himself willingly out of his love and grace for us. We know that he is the good shepherd who will lay down his life and who is with us. And if... Jesus loves us that much. And if his love is that fierce for us, I have to believe that if Jesus wants to talk to us, his voice will get through to us. Because he is the good shepherd. But he's not just the good shepherd. And this gentle uh, picture of a, just a, you know, hanging out with his sheep. No, this is a shepherd who will fight for his flock. This is a shepherd who will go and find the one who is lost. Bring him back into the fold. And so we have to trust that that God and that Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, is capable of speaking to us in a way that we won't be tricked as well. I had an experience this last week, and some of you may have seen this on Facebook, where my profile was spoofed, where somebody got my profile pictures and pretended to be me, had my same name, and started sending weird and random messages to people. Do you know how that, has anyone else had that happen to them? Yeah, it doesn't feel good, does it? Because you feel like someone's trying to pretend to be me. And there, are, there were certain things I could do. I went and talked to Instagram and they got rid of it quickly and all these things. But it felt, made me feel kind of, ugh, someone's out there trying to trick people in my name. And that's just me as a human being here. How do you think the God of the universe that created us and that desires to speak to us and communicate to us, how do you think he feels when people are trying to trick his flock in his name. I don't think he takes well to it. (laughs) And so that's why I believe that when we earnestly are opening ourselves up to the possibility that God can speak and that we can hear his voice, that he will speak in ways that, that, um, that are, are, um, that he will protect. And he will speak um, in ways that sometimes are curious and mysterious. He did that all the time through parables. And yet we also trust that he has now given us his spirit to help us understand. Of course the enemy, we know, who has come to steal, kill, and destroy is going to do his best to run interference. So we have to acknowledge that. 
But there are a few um, guardrails, I believe, that God has given us, a few things that we can know when it is God's voice and discern the imitator's voice, the accuser's voice. And the first thing comes back to, to, to verse 10. The enemy, the thief, has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. As I pray, as I'm trying to listen to God's voice, my shepherd's voice, am I getting messages of condemnation? Messages that are trying to steal the joy that God would have for me. Trying to kill within me the life that God has given me. Trying to destroy the image of God within me? Or am I hearing a voice that gives life and hope and future? That's one guardrail. The other guardrail we have is the flock. God's given us each other. We don't journey, make this journey alone. And that's why it's so important, friends, that we are church, that we are together in whatever ways God is bringing us together so that we can together discern God's voice and together we can say, wow, that sounds like the God I know and I've experienced. Or, Whoa, let's dig into this some more together. But it takes us being together. It takes us being a flock and it takes us being vulnerable with one another. There are so many other um, things that... that I hope over the coming months we'll explore ways in discerning God's voice and what he might be speaking to us. But my whole point this morning is that I really feel like God wants us to know that as we are searching for reorientation, as we are looking to come out of this time of disorientation, that God is speaking to us and that God is calling us and that he is giving us a way forward and that God is happy to speak to us. I'm going to leave us with two short images. One is that um, we as a leadership team on Thursday night, we're talking about the way forward for Avenue Church in this time. And the image that God gave us was one where we're on this boat together. And we're in some rapids. We're on a river. And this river is flowing pretty quick. And there's rapids there. There's rocks over there. There's twists and turns. And we don't necessarily have a map (laughs) of where we're always going. We, it feels like we're almost trying to draw this map as we're going along the river. But here's the good news, friends. We have a guide in that boat with us. Jesus is with us. And to us, at times, it may feel like he is, he's taking a nap. And he just might be. <laughs> because he knows He knows the river and he knows when it's safe and he knows when we need him. Are we listening to our guide? Are we open to the possibility that Jesus may have things to speak to us on this river and as we go forward? That's my one hope and prayer for us is that we'd be open to his leading. The other thing is this. I hope and I pray that we will um, catch the excitement that Jesus has for us individually but as a church Jesus loves this body this ragtag group called Avenue Church and he has plans and purposes for it and he wants to speak into our hearts and our minds and our imaginations about the future that he has for us and we talked it on our leadership team meeting on Thursday again God is up to some really cool things already at Avenue Church. And we may just not recognize it. And I trust me, I get it because the disorientation is so thick that sometimes we're not seeing where God's Spirit is already up and reorienting us in new and exciting ways to Him. And so that's my prayer and and encouragement for us. Let's see where God is already at work. Let's be open to hearing how he's inviting us to join him in those things, those exciting and maybe scary things. And we can do this because why? We have a good shepherd. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for um, being our good shepherd. 
And we thank you for uh, the fact that you love us and that you care for us and that you came and that you laid down your life for us so that we might have life and have it to the full. Because we as your sheep, we are afraid. We need a flock. And we need someone to follow. And thank you for inviting us to follow you. So, so Jesus, I pray and I thank you that you are already at work in so many amazing ways. And I just ask that by your Holy Spirit, even now, that you're opening up our eyes and our our hearts and our imaginations to see where you are at work already and where you're inviting us to to come and join you in that work. And I pray that you would open up our our hearts and our imaginations and the spiritual ears and the spiritual eyes that you've given us to to see how you might be talking to us and how you might be desiring to, to speak into the everyday details of our lives because you care because you love us and you know what's best for us. And I pray that you would give us wisdom and discernment to to know your voice. As this passage says, the sheep know your voice. Father God, I feel like we've gotten out of practice. I know, I confess, I've gotten out of practice hearing your voice. So teach us what it means to hear you again and to know your voice. Um. And so we just pray and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to give us about...